In this video, I'm going to be talking about upgrades that I've made to my folding bike. I'm going to show you up close on this bike various upgrades and improvements that I've made and things that I've learned from going on tour on a folding bike. So this is a aluminium frame folding bicycle with 20 inch wheels. I purchased this bike second hand. I actually got two of them for $40. And that was a really, really great deal. But when I bought them, they were totally covered in rust. They'd come off a sailboat and they did need a bit of cleaning and a little bit of TLC just to get them in good enough condition to ride. I did have to replace a bunch of the parts initially because they were too rusted, but mostly it was just some of the small stuff, small screws and that here and there. And um, on one of these bikes, the wheel was buckled, so I did replace that. But it's your typical aluminium frame folding bike that you might find for sale on places like Amazon or at various uh, sporting goods stores, wherever you may live. Now one of the first things I did, one of the first upgrades I made to this bike, was just to remove the mud guards. So, you know, in the USA I think you call them fenders, but they basically cover the tire here, a little bit of steel, um, to stop the mud from spraying on you when you're riding. I don't find that uh, mud guards are that useful, so I did take them off. Now they, to do that, I just took out the bolt where they were attached, and I think they were also attached here um, with little bits of wire. I took them and threw them away because they were totally rusty. That was the first thing I did um, to this bike. And one of the next things I did was to replace the brakes. So that's a pretty easy upgrade that you can do, and you don't need to do it. If you've got brakes that are functioning perfectly, then, you know, I wouldn't recommend it. But if uh, they need replacing, if they've got a lot of rust and things, you can, you can do what I did and just replace them. I had these kicking around, and these are aluminium cast brakes. And I only replaced these, uh, the ones that were on here, because the ones that were on here were very, very rusty. And these were a lot better. It was a pretty easy job to replace those. Just a few bolts. And then, yeah, put it all back together, and I didn't replace the cables, although they could probably do with replacing. That's something that you can replace and upgrade quite easily. You can pick up these parts and things like brake shoes and stuff. You'll easily be able to, to find that part for replacement. But replacing the brakes and removing the mud guards, that was the first sort of upgrade I did on this bike. You can see if you look a little closely on it that there's still signs of, of rust and things. They were on a sailboat for, I believe, three or four years out on the ocean. But because the frame is made of aluminium, it's a pretty good sort of bike to get for a project. You're not going to get rust in that frame. And although it's not easy to, uh, to fix it if you did, do get any cracks in it, an aluminium frame is nice and light. And it's a good place to start if you're building a bike or modifying a bike that you want to take on tour with you. So once I'd removed the mud guards and, and replaced the brakes, of course I'd also replaced the brakes here on the back. Once I'd done that, there was just a lot of cleaning and things to do. And um, most of the rust, most of the rust was removed pretty pretty easily, but I didn't. I didn't change out the back carrier. Even though it's got a little bit of rust, it's perfectly fine. Now in the past I have made upgrades to the carrier on the back. And if you look at my very first videos when I was in Japan, um, I bought a bike that didn't have a rear carrier and I was able to get a carrier that was quite a lot bigger than these 20 inch wheel carriers and it actually went like further out from the wheel and yeah it, it was off a big bike so it was it was a huge huge uh, carrier for carrying a lot of gear and it was really really good so you can put a a mountain bike carrier or a carrier off a larger bike onto this 20 inch bike frame like it will fit most of the time you can see that this hinge here uh, means that you can fit it onto different size bicycles but if you are picking up secondhand parts or you're buying new parts or a new carrier for your bike, just do ensure that it will fit on the frame 
that you are working with. That's another upgrade that you can make. And although I haven't replaced the rear carrier on this bike, I have replaced the front carrier. Now luckily I had this luggage carrier um, in my possession already. I'd taken it off my first folding bike that I, that I got, the one I got in Japan. And it's a great front rack and I haven't seen anything like that for sale. So yeah, don't ask me where you can buy it because I don't know, I picked it up second hand. But you can see it's got this hard point here that attaches at the top of the forks. So most of the weight is, um, is taken on that bolt there. You can carry quite a bit of weight on there. I think I probably had up to six or seven kilos on there at a time. But the thing that I did the modification on was this bracket. So I built that bracket myself out of aluminium, just bent it, drilled a few holes, and made it fit on there. Now you can do that if you're looking to make upgrades yourself in a DIY style. I'm sure you'll be able to modify a carrier to fit on your folding bike. And where I've put that bracket there is just below the handlebar and that's so not to interfere with the folding mechanism. The folding mechanism still works perfectly even though I've got that front carrier on there. As far as the controls go, you know I don't think I replaced anything but previously I've made upgrades to these brake levers. Sometimes you get these if you buy a particularly cheap folding bike you'll find that these levers and stuff are plastic. I do like to replace them with these cast aluminium brake levers. They're just a bit stronger. And um, you know, I have had, on my first folding bike tour in Japan, I had one of these brake. It was made of plastic. And I was just riding down so many hills with a lot of weight on the bike that it just couldn't, it couldn't take it and it, it fractured. So yeah, that's an upgrade that you can make is just putting these nice aluminium brake levers on there. Um, I've put this on here, so this is just a camera mount for a, for a GoPro. And if you've seen my videos, you'll know that well, I don't really use um, I don't really use GoPro that much. Now, the problem that I have with GoPro is that the batteries just run out when you need it the most can be really annoying but it's cool to have that and I have filmed some pretty cool um, riding shots through Paris and stuff by putting a GoPro on there on the handlebars gives a good perspective now that's just a little mount that I bought from I don't know it's from Amazon or something but it works pretty well so I just leave that on there all the time it's not really an upgrade that affects the performance of the bike but you know it helps so the most obvious thing that I have replaced and the thing that I've had a few questions about was the seat. Now a seat is like going to be something that is up to the rider. Everybody will have their own preference for what kind of seat they will like. And a lot of people will just use the one that comes with the bike. And if that's a comfortable seat for you then that's fine, you won't need to replace anything. I've also seen people talk about things like Brooks saddles and things which are made of leather, but this is the kind of seat that I prefer. Now this is just taken off a second hand bike. I actually found a bunch of trash bikes in France on the roadside with a pile of trash and there was this wonderful gel seat. Well, I think it's gel. No, it's just actually just memory foam, but it's it's pretty comfortable. It's the kind of seat that you might find on a mountain bike uh, or like a, I don't know, just a general like road bike. It's not like a high performance thing. And it might actually be more suited to a lady's bike. I don't know. I just liked it because it was really, 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 really comfortable. And um, it's kind of got this like area here where it's cut out, that's probably good for ventilation and stuff. You do can t tend to get quite sweaty when you're riding long distances, especially in the heat. But yeah, mostly the comfort. So you've got springs there. Um, it attaches here just to the seat post that I already have on the bike. 
there's just one bolt there to undo it and you can move it back and forth and you can also move it um, like position it um, forwards and backwards as well just until you get the right the right um, seat position for you all right so the other improvement or upgrade that I've made to this bike was I swapped out the pedals initially it came with folding pedals now folding pedals um, could be pretty useful and 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 that if you do need to fold them a lot to save space but I don't actually think like personally that folding pedals actually save a lot of space when you are um, folding the bike one reason you might want to have folding pedals is if you're transporting it on a train uh, a lot or something around other people and, you, and you're taking it into a tight space and you don't want to knock into people or things um, folding pedals might be good but if you're planning on riding a long distance I would definitely recommend just these sturdy block type pedals you'll find them on any kind of bike you just got to make sure that the thread here is the same size as the as the bike that you're putting them onto and they should be a lot better than the folding pedals the folding pedals are just there's just more chance of failure if you're riding over a long distance they're just not as sturdy as these ones but if you want to go with the folding pedals then yeah you know just go ahead whatever you're comfortable with it's all about just having the kind of bike that you want to be riding and that you feel comfortable on and that works for you all right so the last thing i'll show you on this bike which was an upgrade that i didn't make until i was quite far along in my journey and i picked these up in dieppe in france from decathlon they are these trekking uh, tires now uh, when I got the bike it just had normal slick road tires on it previously I have used all-terrain tires and they work pretty well but if you're going to be riding on the road you might as well just get something nice and smooth and these are cool because they have a bit of tread and these are really really great tires um, and you know they're not totally puncture resistant so if you have used those Schwalbe citizen tires or something like that i know that the turn bikes come with those as standard these ones are not they're not as um as puncture resistant as that but i think they cost 10 euros each these tires so i just replaced one at a time as i needed them and you know now we've got a set of matching tires as well so that's a look at the upgrades that i've made to my bike as I've said before, I just use second-hand parts. My name's Andy, you're watching Hobo Cyclist. Go watch this video next if you want to check out more about these bikes. And I'll see you in the next episode.